So in our last video, we did all the setup work in our Xcode project and Firebase console required to receive a dynamic link within our app. And then we created a real Firebase dynamic link for testing purposes. In this video, we're gonna finally do the work necessary to take this incoming link and turn it into something meaningful. Are you excited? I sure am. Let's go. So the process for interpreting dynamic links is pretty straightforward. Your app is gonna be receiving these dynamic links as a URL, either through a universal link or a custom URL scheme. Your app will then pass in these URLs to the dynamic links library, which will convert them into a Firebase dynamic link object if the URL is a proper dynamic link or a null object if it isn't. And then from there, you'll be able to extract the original deep link URL parameter, which contains the data you're actually interested in. So uh, let's start doing that. Now, first off, I'll need to make sure that I have the dynamic links library installed. So I'll add Firebase slash dynamic links to my pod file and save it and then run pod install. We can wait a few moments, do, 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 and okay, now we're done. Now, remember that incoming URLs can reach our app in two ways, and they're handled in two different methods. For universal links, we handle those in our app delegates application continue user activity restoration handler method. So uh, we'll implement that first. First off, I'll check and see if I have an incoming URL here by checking if useractivity.webpageurl really exists. If so, uh, let's print it out. That always makes debugging easier. And then if it does exist, I'll want to call dynamic links handle universal link on the incoming URL. This is what's going to parse this incoming dynamic link URL and turn it into a dynamic link object. Note that it returns a Boolean right away if it believes this is parsable, but then gives me the object in a callback. And that's because we need to make a network call to convert our short dynamic link into the full one with all the parameters and everything. So in this callback, I'm first going to do just a little error checking. Then I will see if this dynamic link object exists. Okay, if it does, I'm going to pass this object along to a custom handle incoming dynamic link method that I'll go ahead and write in a moment. Okay, let's finish up this method. Uh, Xcode keeps nagging me to return a Boolean, so uh, we'll do that. I could say return link handled here, although keep in mind that if you are using universal links for other things in your app, don't, don't do this, right? You might want to do like a if link handled return true, else do some other stuff here, right? Like if your app is receiving universal links from other sources, you'll need to handle those two somewhere in this method. And then here at the end, I'll return false since I've got nothing else that can handle this incoming activity. Uh, by the way, do I need a weak self here? Uh, I'm going to say no in this particular case because I'm pretty sure I can never get into a situation where this callback is still running and my app delegate is nil. But still, if you want to add it because you feel weird not putting it in, go ahead, be my guest. Okay, now let's write this handle incoming dynamic link method. So uh, let's see. Um, I'm just going to start by checking to see if our dynamic link actually contains a URL parameter. This is that deep link URL value that I set in the last video, and it contains the actual data that my app will need to properly handle this link. If it does exist, I guess we can just print it out. And uh, actually, that's all I'm going to do for now. Let's give this a try. So I'll run my app, then I will switch over to notes and click on the link. And I don't know about you, but it sometimes takes me a few tries to successfully click on a URL in notes. Maybe it's just me and my fingers, but eventually this does take us back into my app. And we can see in my Xcode log here that it has successfully received my dynamic link and properly extracted my URL parameter from it. Nice. But like I said, there are two ways of getting a dynamic link. Even if you're running a modern version of iOS, you'll still need to handle dynamic links sent through custom URL schemes, typically for when a user first installs your app. So let's add the code to support this, and then I can show you how to test it. Now in my app, I'm going to capture any incoming custom URL schemes by using the application open URL options method. But keep in mind that if you are still kicking it old school and supporting iOS 8 or earlier, you should also use application open URL source application annotation. Okay, next I'm going to pass my incoming URL link to the dynamic links, dynamic link from custom scheme URL method. And this works very much like the handle universal link method, but it's instant, so there's no callback and it returns the dynamic link object right away. And then just like before, I can send that object on to my app's custom handle incoming dynamic link method, and then I can return true. Now, if this method doesn't return a dynamic link object, that probably means this is some other URL, maybe like a URL that I get from Facebook or Google sign-in. So I'll probably want to pass this off to other parts of my code that could handle it. Oh, and you know, while I'm here, I'm also going to print out a little debug info so that I know that I've received a link through a custom URL scheme. 
All right, now to test this, I'm gonna simulate the process of clicking on the link and installing my app for the first time. So first, I'm gonna to go to my device and uninstall my app. All right, that's done. Next, I'm gonna go back to notes and click on the link. Since I no longer have the app installed, it's gonna take me to an interstitial page. Now we put this page up for a number of different reasons. First, having a preview page, particularly if you customize the title, description, and image like we talked about in the last video, uh, you can prepare the user a whole lot better for going to the App Store than just by like immediately tossing up a, hey, we're gonna send you to the App Store kind of dialogue. Uh, second, by redirecting to a secondary page like this, um, it just tends to work a whole lot better if your dynamic link is embedded inside of some popular social networking apps or other apps that might be trying to use their own embedded web views. It tends to avoid some technical issues. And third, this little checkbox here, this gives us a chance to ask the user if we can copy this link so we can use it later. Now, if they say yes, we copy the dynamic link directly to the iOS pasteboard, and this gives us the most accurate method of saving the dynamic link from the user so that we can recover it after they install our app. Now, it turns out that my custom page has a couple of problems with it. Uh, for starters, I probably don't wanna be labeling it as project 772400 whatever, also, it looks like the URL I supplied for the preview image is broken. Now, luckily, both of these are easy to fix. Uh, to fix this top label, I'm going to go to my project settings in the Firebase console and change the public facing name of my project to Recipe Rally. Should have done that in the first place, I guess. And then to fix this image, I'm gonna go back to the Firebase console and click Edit Link from the dropdown menu here. Now, since Firebase Dynamic Links makes a network call to go from a short URL to a longer one, we can generally change a bunch of these parameters after the fact, and it will retroactively apply to all these links. So in my case, I'm gonna go down here and add an image URL that isn't broken. And then we can go back to my app. We'll click on my link one more time. And well, okay, that's a lot better, although I still might wanna tweak that image a little bit. Anyway, I'm gonna continue here and say, why yes, I would like to install your app from the App Store. This will then take me to the App Store listing for Google Photos, which as you recall, is the App Store ID I entered in the Firebase console. Now, of course, this is the totally wrong app, but for testing purposes, that's okay. As far as Dynamic Links is concerned, it saved my link to the pasteboard and sent me to the App Store, so I can now continue like normal. So now I can simulate my actual app getting installed and opened for the first time by reinstalling my app from Xcode. And you'll see that when I open up the app for the quote unquote first time, it once again finds my dynamic link information. And we can see by this line in the console here that it did so through the custom URL scheme. Now, if we hadn't used that interstitial page, there's still a chance we can get that original dynamic link, but we'd primarily be doing it through some light device fingerprinting, which tends to be a little less accurate. Now, as far as actually processing the link URL parameter, that's really up to your app. You saw that in both of these cases, I'm passing the dynamic link object into this separate function here. So the important thing to note here is the URL property of the dynamic link object, which remember is the value of the deep link URL property you set in the Firebase console. And that's probably what you wanna be working with. So I might parse the URL like so, and then do something interesting with the arguments, but really that's up to my app and you know its own custom logic. Finally, there's one last thing I should call out. You'll notice that every dynamic link has this parameter called match confidence. This lets you know how confident the library is that you've retrieved the dynamic link that your user clicked on. Now this thing basically has four levels. There's unique, which means, yep, we're sure this is the dynamic link the user clicked on. You'll typically get this result either when you open up a dynamic link using universal links or with a pasteboard, which means you end up getting it most of the time. And that's good. But then you have default, which means we're pretty sure this is the link the user clicked on, but we're not 100% confident. Then there's weak, which means we're guessing this might be the link the user clicked on, but in this crazy mixed up world of ours, who really knows for sure? And then there's none, which means we didn't find a match at all, and the contents of this URL property will be blank. So why do you care about this? Because if you're using your dynamic links for sharing personal information, like maybe your users are sharing pictures of themselves or showing their names or that sort of thing, you really wanna make sure this link is unique before you display any of that information. If this ends up being default or weak, well, you probably wanna remove any personal data associated with the link or ignore the link entirely. You kinda of need to think about what kind of data you might be sending here and make the right call for your app. So there you go, kids everything you need to get started using dynamic links in your own apps. Now, there's certainly more we could get into like debugging these things or building our own from within the app, but these are topics probably best left for other videos. In the meantime, go ahead and check out the documentation for more helpful info and start linking away.
Hey, did you enjoy this video? Well, maybe you wanna check out a few others from the Firebase channel, like this one here or this one here. They're both fantastic. I don't have a favorite. It's like picking my favorite child. Um, secretly, I like one better than the other. I'm just not gonna tell you.